Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. Today we're going to talk about multiplying binomials. So if you remember in one of the last videos where we talked about naming polynomials, I said that it was going to be really important to understand the difference between a binomial and a trinomial and the difference between those and a polynomial. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why. You have to be able to recognize when you have a binomial being multiplied by a binomial and because when we have this happen we do something very special called foiling and it's the easiest way to solve it super easy to remember as long as you remember the acronym FOIL so we're gonna go through the acronym go through a couple different example problems and I highly encourage you to do a lot of example problems on your own the internet is full of tons of examples because this gets easier the more you practice it it will become like second nature but that's the key you have to practice it so when we see a binomial being multiplied by a binomial we FOIL so our F stands for first that means that we multiply the first two parts of our binomial. So in this case, it would be x and x. So x times x is x squared. Remember that x has an understood 1, and that x has understood exponent of 1. When we multiply straight across, we add exponents, so x squared. Our next part of the acronym is O for outer. So that means we multiply now the outer two um, parts. So in this case, it would be x times 4, positive 4x. Our next part of the acronym stands for inner. So we do the inner two terms, so positive 3 times positive x would be positive 3x. And now, lastly, we do the last two terms. So that would be positive 3 times positive 4, which would give us positive 12. So you might notice this kind of looks like a little man face. We call him the foil man. All right, now, every time that we do this in Math 1, you're going to have two center terms that are like terms that you're going to need to combine. So in this case, we've got our x squared, which I can't combine with anything. And then we've got 4x and 3x. So we go ahead and combine those because they are like terms. So we would get positive 4 plus 3 is 7x. And then we still have our constant, which we can't combine with anything, so it'll just hang out. All right, let's look at the next example. We start again. Oh, again, we recognize this is a binomial being multiplied by a binomial. So we start by multiplying our first two numbers, 7x and 6x. 7 times 6 is 42x squared. And I didn't leave a whole lot of space for my loop, but that's okay. Now we need to do the outer. So 7x times negative 5. So that would be a negative 35x. Now I need to do my inner. Negative 2 times 6x would be negative 12x. And now my last. Negative 2 times negative 5 would be a positive 10. So again, I've got those two center terms that I need to go ahead and combine into my final answer. Um, so I've got 42x squared. I can't combine that with anything. Negative 35x minus 12x ends up being a negative 47x. And I have my constant of plus 10. And it's a good thing to note that if you do this right, you'll end up with your answer in standard form. So we always want to have our highest exponent in descending order and then our constant last. And we talked about that in my last video. This last example is a very frequently missed problem. So I really want to make sure I touch on it. Um, I think that this confuses students because we just 
got out of talking about laws of exponents, which we apply throughout the whole chapter, but we are just coming out of really talking about that every single day. Um, and so students think, okay, I'm supposed to distribute this two to everything in the parentheses. And we actually don't do that here. And let me show you why. Students are used to, at this point in the semester, seeing problems like this. And in this case, we absolutely would distribute this exponent of two into the problem. Remember, this um, two has an understood power of one, the x has an understood power of one. We talked about power to power in one of my videos. So one times two is two, and one times two is two, and then we would simplify this. Two times two is four x squared, okay? And that is a case when we would do that. Um, here's the difference. This is a monomial. This is a binomial. One, two, it's got two terms. When we have two terms or two sections separated by either a plus sign or a minus sign, we cannot distribute this two over that plus sign. Okay, it just doesn't work that way. We can only distribute that two when we're talking about monomials. And if you go back in my video and, and watch some of those earlier ones uh, where we talked about power to power rules or the video where I did all the examples of exponent laws, um, you'll notice every single one of those problems was a monomial when we distributed that. So all that's to say to really just eliminate that and explain why we don't do this here. So what do we do here? Well, when we have x plus 7 squared, it literally means we are going to write x plus 7 twice. So now hopefully a light went off and you're thinking, oh, well that's a binomial being multiplied by binomial. We should FOIL, and you're absolutely right. That's exactly what we should do here. So we'll proceed with FOILing. I need to multiply my first terms. So x times x is x squared. Again, didn't give myself a whole lot of room to swoop, but that's okay. My outer two terms, x times positive seven will give me positive seven x. Now my two inner terms, 7 times x is positive 7x. And now my last term. So positive 7 times positive 7 would be positive 49. In this case, again, we've got our two center that we need to go ahead and combine. So I end up with x squared 7 plus 7 would be positive 14x. And then my plus 40. This has been a video on multiplying binomials, aka foiling. In my next video, we're going to talk about what happens when you have a binomial being multiplied by a trinomial. This is Miss Miss Math Tutorials.